Okay, so um, before I uh, started filming this week, I just wanted to get some sense of direction and see where I was actually going. Um, so uh, bef I've got to the point where I'm pretty firm, firm on where I'm going to go at this point, so I thought I'd start filming now. Um, what I went ahead and did was, with the window up, pull the door closed, and uh, I'm inside here, and um, I, uh, rather than a fool with the glass window, I cut this shape out of some quarter inch Lexan. Now it's flat, but it's going to give me the angles and it's going to give me where the bottom of the window is going to fall um, and where these holes are located, you know, some critical points. Um, of course, the final fit will have to be with the glass window, which is sitting here in the seat nicely. Um, but what you can see what I'm doing here is the first thing I've done is I've created this. Um, uh, it's 0, uh, 045 steel and I've created a pocket that attaches just below the window whisker. Now this is one of the old window whiskers that's fallen apart but it gives me the spacing that I need as far as what the, um, the distance off the sheet metal is going to be. Now what I did with this window whisker so I could just take it on and off when I need to is there's clips on the back and I just cut them off and f just cut them flat so I wouldn't have to keep trying to clip and unclip it. So I just got a couple of uh, sheet metal screws uh, um, holding the uh, window whisker in and then you can see I've got a couple of sheet metal screws holding this uh, pocket in. Now what this pocket is um, is, is sh how it's shaped is I've got about, it's got a half inch of clearance below the glass that allows me to put the window in from the inside and then pick it up into the position uh, and then what I'll be doing is I'll be putting some spacers underneath to hold it up uh, when I, uh, I'll have two bolt holes going through the glass with sleeves and everything and some um, uh, basically some capture plates on the back side so I've got some adjustment forward backwards up and down before I tighten the glass in um, uh, but right now what I'm doing is I've had to stop this uh, operation now that I've got this located as far as how the window needs to be uh, related to the height and the forward and back so that's in its general location and I was going to build, start building the floor of this, this box here but before I could do that here's where the uh, seat belt uh, mounts right here I've maintained the stock location for the seat, seat belt mount well, what I have to do is I have to make something a whole lot more rigid for there's a bracket that normally mounts up about this high on the Challenger that has a loop on it and that's what the belt comes through the loop and actually you know that's what you know will hold the belt back you know and then down through to the to the reel back here so I have to a add some reinforcement in here and so what I've got to do is I've got to come across I've got to come across here with some this is just a, a mock-up piece. I'm going to have some more substantial, possibly eighth-inch wall, uh, one-inch tubing. Come around and top this off just below what would be the bottom of this window pocket. And that will basically run all the way back to the back here and then stiffen up this entire thing and make give this some strength that I could actually bolt that ring. It's going to have to bolt lower uh, here, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue because it loops up and then it'll go through uh, up over the loop in the seat but uh, because if I bring it up in here um, then I'll have to make a separate mounting plate for it which I still may do but then it becomes a, an issue of through bolting and then it's hazarding the glass the glass is going to be in this location here so um, I haven't 100% seen how this is all going to line up but uh, right for right now um, this is going to give me, if nothing else, it's going to give me a, a nice strong mounting position uh, for uh, the loop that holds the belt back. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that before I get too far along. Alright, so moving along, I've taken some 120 wall or 8th inch wall, uh, one by one tubing, and I've made this piece here, which this piece is going to fit like into here and into there and this panel all the way around will be welded to this piece then this will be welded to the door jam uh, this will make a pretty rigid piece going from front to rear here 
Um, I'm going to put a um, captured nut through here. Then I'll put two captured nuts here so that I can put a plate on here and extend the receiver plate up up about this high for the loop that goes to the uh, to the belt. So it'll be a removable plate. So if you have to take the window out, replace the window, you just re take this plate off here. The plate will be bolted through here, probably about three sixteenths of an inch plate. Also, I put a, 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 a capture bolt here with the idea of possibly connecting something to this roof bolt here. This is the actual, this is an embedded nut in the roof structure for seat belts uh, for the um, 06 char or excuse me, for the 68 charger. And so this gives me an opportunity to bring a member down right behind the window molding and connect this uh, to the roof and what that'll do is uh, it'll just help with you know these cars the old cars used to flex quite a bit I know mine does when you jack it up you know these doors will open up a little bit but uh, you know if you want to race this thing a little bit maybe this will help tie the roof into the uh, to this structure a little bit and uh, prevent any of that from happening so anyway the opportunity is there um, I can always cover this over the fabric if we decide not to do that um, you'll never see that, but the uh, the bolt um, is embedded there, and it has a backer spacer here, so that when you tighten it down, it won't cave this sheet metal in. So that's all ready to go, uh, should we decide to take that opposite option. Um, but anyway, I'll put that embedded nut in here, and um, we'll go from there. All right, so we've got this piece, this one by one inch. Uh, eighth inch wall piece welded in here now it's welded to this door post um, it's really strengthened up everything here this is really rigid now all the way over to here and creates a nice base for me to do the rest of my work with this uh, this glass uh, uh, holder if you whatever you want to call it uh, anyway um, now that that's established I also have, like I said, a bolt through section here with a captured nut on the on the back side. If I decide I want to run a connector all the way up to here to connect the roof to this door pillar, essentially making it almost like a post car, but with the post moved in uh, away from the windows. Um, and then over here is where the seat belt uh, plate will attach, which this is the uh, plate that I res uh, recovered out of the Challenger. Now I'll put that on probably a 3 16 plate and kick it out over here so that it's away from the glass. Um, uh, and then uh, it'll bolt through here and that's what the, there's a loop that, let me just show you the loop here a minute and get out of the car. Um, there's this loop right here, okay. Where the uh, it bolts in, and then the, this allows the uh, the belt to slide like this, and it bolts through these two holes right here. So that'll bolt uh, to that plate, and then the plate will have to be positioned to where this uh, interacts with the seat. There's a loop on top of the seat that you run the belt through. Anyway, that's uh, that's what I'm up to there. So a little bit more design work on the uh, the window tray, and we'll move on from here. All right, I've got this temporarily tacked in here. Um, I've got it rocked all the way in so that it's basically in the same plane with the, the cutout here uh, on the back side here. It's up behind this piece of uh, sheet metal that this goes to. Um, so um, what I'm trying to do there is determine how much of a spacer I'll have to put in here to keep the glass at the angle it needs to be at and also uh, complement the same amount of spacing that the window whiskers are going to require. I had the door closed, uh, glass in, glasses up against the uh, where the window is adjusted here on the door um, so I know I can get that <clears throat> and um, so now I have to uh, cut this back out, cut these tacks, get it back out, drill some holes and uh, do the rest of the apparatus I have still squirreling around in my brain. All right, the, le the next step here in this window capture is I have to create a bed for the window to actually attach to that will be adjustable. 
Now the first thing I did was um, I made this, uh, this is out of uh, 045, a 2 inch flange up, a 5 eighths flange on the bottom. And what I've done here is I marked out the holes in the glass, the center of the two holes in the glass. And I made sure that the relationship was right to the tray that I had in the car as far as where these end up. And then the next thing I did was I welded some nuts based on all those locations, which keeps will keep the glass up off the bottom here. So I'll have a little padding on the bottom side here and on the back side also. Um, what I've got here is, is these nuts are welded right to the surface here. They're not through the other side. Uh, I'm all the way drilled through the other side and the reason I want that is, is I want these nuts to bottom out I don't want to torque have the chance of torquing on the glass so what I'll do is, is these will attach the glass with large washers with a rubber a gasket on the back side of it so that when it snugs up and it tight it'll tighten down to the back side here and I can't turn it any further no chance of over torquing it and breaking the glass at least that's the theory Anyway, just a little safety measure there. Um, all right, so on to the next step. All right, with this tray out of the car, I had already located uh, where I wanted, you know, I, the glass to end up from the start of where I want to start to, to uh, adjust it up into place. So at the very bottom, um, this is where everything was located. I had drilled pilot holes through this piece I had marked, excuse me, I would marked this piece and then I had drilled pilot holes through so that I could mark the locations on this piece. As you can see I've got the both of them held in place now with Clecos with just that eighth inch pilot hole that comes through the center here. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill about an inch away on either side two more holes. Now those two holes will have two studs that go through and they will be slotted holes in the tray itself and the studs will be welded to this piece so that this piece will be able to be moved up and down and slightly forward or backward and you'll be able to tilt this thing and then reach up from the back side and then tighten uh, some uh, lock nuts on the back side of this tray in order to keep the window in adjustment. So um, that's what I'm about to do right now. All right, this is what this ended up looking like. Um, you can see on the back side here I don't have the lock nuts on it, it's just got a washer and a regular nut, but uh, it has the ability to be tilted and, and of course raised up and down is the biggest thing to get it up tight against the seal on the outside. Um, now, what I, and these are the two attachment points for the, for the glass itself. Now what I have to do is I have to create a soft cradle that will cover the nuts and everything where the glass will actually bolt against that. And that's my next step. Okay, I've shown you this stuff before. <laughs> it's plastic decking material you get at the uh, home center. Anyway, it uh, it's pretty nice because it mills pretty pretty cleanly, and it's soft, just soft enough, but it's also waterproof. Um, so you're making something uh, like this. It's, it's a perfect application, which is basically uh, I'll show you the end of it. Uh, it's got uh, it's about nine six or uh, it's about five sixteenths here plus a sixteenth so that's three eighths total which is the size of the spacer that I need um, there's a quarter inch ledge here for the glass to sit on uh, and a couple clearance holes to go around the nuts and the studs that I already have which stands the glass off of those so that it doesn't get harmed by hitting the metal when we tighten everything down and anyway I've got to attach this uh, to this and go on from there okay so here's the uh, Here's the glass and the completed cradle. I just uh, put some countersink rivets through the back side of this piece of plastic to hold it to the, to the metal part of the cradle. I uh, took a piece of uh, this uh, blue silicone hose. It's a half inch outside diameter, quarter inch inside diameter. I cut off a section of that and um, just put it in the hole. What that does is it isolates the bolt from the glass so the bolt the metal bolts not hitting the the glass on this perimeter it's going through the center of this rubber hose um, then I cut a small uh, piece of gasket material to match my fender washer 
and then I trimmed off this bolt so that it would just bottom out just as it snugs up in this hole and holds this whole thing to the cradle right here it's already done one over on this side over here now with this said the way the glass is pretty tight in there so I have to put this cradle in the car first and then put the glass to the cradle and then adjust it up all right so this is what the cradle looks like in its spot um, ready for the glass you can see it's got some adjustment up and down uh, I've got some uh, nylon locking nuts on the back side when I get it in the position I can lock it in place but uh, it has adjustment up and down and you can tilt it a little bit um, if it's gonna if it ends up being a little bit out this way or that way I'll just have to shim it from the back side shim the glass itself or shim shim the bracket depending on which way it needs to go um, I don't want to get too elaborate this is elaborate enough for a stationary window anyway try to get the glass in here next all right so here it is the glass is in um, and it's adjusted up I didn't have to adjust it up as high as I thought I would I didn't need hardly any of the adjustment truthfully um, it's good here I see I'll close the door here and it's closing pretty good against the seal here we have an air gap over here but I have to shim down this entire track in the back it has to come uh, the whole track has to come back or excuse me has to go yep yeah, has to go back because you can see daylight over here so I got to bring the bring the uh, the whole track to close up that gap and some other adjustments but this part here is working out pretty good so that's a stationary glass using a roll down uh, glass uh, so the next thing I'm gonna have to do is create a small bathtub where any, if, if any uh, water gets by um, it, here, uh, it's going to end up in this bathtub, and then I'll have a drain right here that'll drain out through the wheel tub. So uh, I'll be uh, fiddling around with that. Um, I will have an additional seal that'll go against this, against this glass when it's done. It just won't be the window whisker over here. So I will have a seal to keep the water out altogether since it's a stationary glass. Um, and, and the best way to deal with water is to keep it from getting in the, in the first place. So that's what I'll be doing. Just give you an idea what this looks like from the outside over here. So we got a pretty good seal there and uh, like I said it's it's up against that pretty good and it's not moving so no rattling um, pretty happy with the way that worked out anyway on to the next thing okay let me show you what I'm doing here first thing I did was I slipped some metal up behind this this flange here and so that I could close up all these holes that are normally used for clips um, uh, I'll be screwing this uh, top piece of chrome in through through here, so it also I also needed some material to screw into there. Um, what I'm doing is I'm creating a bathtub for the the glass in the sense that any water that might get past the seals uh, has a place to go uh, to travel back outside the car. But first, I have to make sure that it doesn't run into the interior of the car. So like this piece is overlapping this piece already so that's if the water comes in here it drips down into here now I've got a small ledge here that I'm uh, welding on right here and then I'll seal down the center so this essentially will become like I said a small little bathtub back here I've completely closed this in so any water driving into the back of the window will hit this drop down and fall into this ledge down here and finally to the end where I have this piece over here uh, which will go in right at the this will finish out the run right here and as you can see it has a little drain a uh, little bathtub drain and I'll show you in a minute what uh, what that all connects to so I was trying to think of um, you know what would be a good size hose to be able to drain that out with and I had a bunch of well, aquarium hose stuff like that none of it was really big enough by the time you put a tube inside and inside of another tube it breaks down to you know something that's not going to carry a lot of water or it's going to get clogged very easily if you needed to carry a lot of water 
Anyway, this is salvaged off of the, the there's four drain hoses from the sky skylight or the the uh, the moon roof or whatever you want to call it sunroof and the car and it's perfectly sized in that it has it's it's about a um, three eighths of an inch hose but then it broadens out to where this is a half inch piece of steel here uh, about 049 wall and that slips perfectly into there so I'll be able to just put a hose clamp on there and then I'll run the other end out here out through the bottom of the uh, the wheel tub it's got a nice little grommet there to pop through and hold it in place so you never know what you're going to use in, in the way of spare parts anyway I'll show you when I get uh, the rest of this cleaned up a little bit more so you can see it a little bit uh, better all right in between uh, fooling around with the window the quarter window uh, in and out of the car waiting for various things to dry paint this and that um, I've been fooling around with a project that I've been kind of dread trying to get the, the hood neatly separated from the inner liner uh, you may say well why would you want to do that but uh, a couple of reasons the first reason is uh, the main reason is uh, it's easier to engineer how the hood hinges are going to fit uh, and whatever has to be clearanced out of here with just the inner liner on the car as opposed to the hood So because you can see through it you can lay it right on there You can see everything exactly that's interfering and then you can put it back together um, later on uh, The other reason is that this hood needed to be flattened out just a little bit because of the way the cowl sits on this and because it's all glued together with all of this glue here everywhere um, up the edges and everything you just can't reshape the hood you know it's not going to slide it's all spot welded around the perimeter um, on the sides over here the back uh, so in order for me to get these corners just to lift up just a tick you know it'll put buckles into this area over here so it's better that I get it shaped to where I want it and then once it's there then I can tack it back together later on also uh, Maybe I'll uh, paint that rusty stuff up there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a hassle getting that apart because this stuff really doesn't want to come apart. I don't know how it is with an older hood. Uh, I don't remember having a, a big problem with the uh, 70 hood I put on my charger. I think most of it was just dried and it came apart on its own. But what I did was I got some this white metal. Uh, it's like uh, you get it for its packing strapping that comes to holds boxes to um, pallets and stuff. And it's pretty rigid. So just put a point on it, <clears throat> slid it under there. You know, spent quite a bit of time set, uh, you know going back and forth and just going ahead and cutting it. This is the toughest stuff along the edge here. Some stuff um, and these tight corners here. Uh, these are not too bad. <clears throat> I was able to take a saw blade. Uh, shallow saw blade and just you know, run it under there and cut these away pretty easily. They weren't too hard. But uh, it took a while and uh, like I said in between things I've been taking that apart. The other thing I was doing was I was roughing in the fender, front fender on the car. Um, looks fantastic uh, except if you want to steer left and right then you're gonna have an issue. You gotta knock the fender off the car so I don't know exactly what I'm going to have to do, but I'm definitely going to have to open up these wheel holes a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to lose the look of the, the charger, you know, with the flattish wheel opening. But um, these tires and wheels are really uh, going to be a challenge to make that all happen. And I, I really don't want to reshape the, the fender too much either. I don't want it to look like it. there's a, there's a problem going on up there. But uh, just another little detail that has to be de dealt with. But um, it doesn't look too bad the way it's sitting right now, though. Wish I could keep it looking like that. Okay, so this gives you an idea of what I was talking about. Um, um, this had to be clearanced out for the air cleaner. You can see how much I had to cut out there. This is probably the highest piece. This is this is like about maybe a quarter of an inch underneath the to half an inch underneath the, the uh, skin of the uh, upper hood. Um, the shock towers right here. You can either trim the shock towers or just relieve the hood right here. I'm going to relieve the hood, obviously. Um, I'm going to have to cut a little bit out here on this edge over here. Uh, let's see what else we got over here. Um, 
fuse box that was in the way I might have to cut a little bit more here um, again the shock towers the edges these uh, little strengthening ribs here and um, I pulled out the entire plastic box that was the uh, where the filter was because there's no way I'm going to get hinges in with that uh, fresh air box anyway I, I don't have a filter in my car and I don't notice any difference so anyway we'll figure something out there that's the least of my worries but we're close to the profile uh, there as you can see it's sitting on the roof sitting on the cowl so we have a little bit here and there uh, to clearance out to get it to where it actually needs to be once the uh, the hood is uh, reskinned because it's actually a little taller at the front there because it has a peak in the middle so it's sitting right now on the underskin which means it has to go even lower to be right Anyway, just uh, inching my way along with that while I'm waiting for some things to dry, some uh, seam sealer and stuff like that on the window. So also while the uh, inner liner is off, thought I took advantage of that time. Uh, there's a couple plates that are there's some they're uh, welded on the back side here. Uh, there's some tabs that go through and they're bent over and then they're welded on top on the top side here where you really normally couldn't get to them. So I just cut those tabs to release these plates these plates basically um, line up over the hood adjusters uh, well this is the location for the hood adjusters that are in this car so I decided to move them mark that location while I had the hood up the last time and move these plates from here to here so that that's where they'll fall well as they say you got to start somewhere with these things um, the hood hinges you know is a big back and forth uh, type of thing you know on again off again move all that good stuff so I'll just start out with the basics uh, these are the challenger hood hinges so I line up the pivot point as close to the back of the hood as I can that would be this point here um, then try to get the whole hinge inboard the hood so that it doesn't interfere with the fenders obviously um, then this pivot arm actually is pretty well designed even just the way it's placed you can see it goes from a, on a taper taken in the fact that the hood tapers in the front to the center line but this uh, line here should be relatively parallel to the center line of the car um, so that the hood actually comes up straight you don't want the hood hinge to be cocked like this to where it's binding as it comes up it's got to come up straight up and down even though the hood could have a severe taper on the edges the hinges have to still come up now whether this is hundred percent aligned with the center line who knows so uh, would rather than committing to uh, captured nuts and plates and everything that you need to reinforce this hinge point I've just got some quarter 20s with some uh, fender washers on here to just kind of shuffle this stuff around and, and see if it's going to work in that location or not uh, or if this has to be raised lowered who knows what's going to have to happen there but you got to start somewhere so before i throw the hood uh, liner back up there i just decided to put those hinges on there and see what happens okay that's uh that's about all i'm going to show you on the hood uh for this uh video um i've been splitting my uh time between the hood and the main project which is these rear windows it's just a matter of it's really tedious getting in and out of the car and also uh Lots of things have to be painted and primed and welded and cooled and all that stuff. So to make the best use of my time, I just decided to start tinkering with the hood and, um, and it's, uh, it's helped a lot. Anyway, I put everything back together and uh, just wanted to show you uh, an issue that I had run into uh, a couple of months ago. And um, I hadn't mentioned it on, on video, but... Um, came into play again today uh, when I was fitting up this uh, channel okay uh, I already knew that I had to move the channel back a little bit because of some distortion in the relationship of this a post relative to the door God only knows what's going on there but anyway I shimmed it back did a good job uh, with the shims to close up that gap where I saw a lot of daylight between the seal and the vent window uh, frame the other thing I had to do uh, as a consequence of what I'm about to tell you is I had to uh, break this uh, rain gutter loose 
and drop it down about a quarter of an inch and then fill this in with steel against the roof to extend the roof down and I'll tell you why in a minute here. Um, I was uh, putting in these doors, uh, the door glass over here initially and having a problem. I was out of adjustment and when I rolled the windows up, they're rolling up to the inside here of everything. It was just ridiculously out of uh, whack and I couldn't figure out what it was. So just in time, somebody on the, uh, the 68 to 70 Charger Body Swaps page on Facebook, uh, uh, Braden Brood, who has a you know car that's in pieces, was looking for a measurement uh, from the distance from that side to that side. And um, I thought I knew that measurement because I'd measured it before I took it off the old chassis to make sure that I maintained that distance. Well, uh, Mopar Don, one of the other members, answered his question and only for me to find out that it was about three quarters of an inch too uh, narrow here. Most of it was on this side, about five eighths of an inch, about an eighth of an inch. On that side, I managed to cut a few things loose and with a port of power, move it back out, re-weld some stuff up and it held. On this side, uh, no such luck. It had to go too far. It had to go five eighths of an inch. It was ridiculous. So I had to cut all of this back loose here. Even with that cut loose, I had to take and slice the top of the quarter panel across here so that I could roll this whole door pillar out towards me and get it to the right uh, position based off the center line of the car so that they were both even. What that did was it pulled material down and away in this direction, which meant that this being fixed, obviously it didn't move, so I had to, to regain this shape, I had to cut this away, and that was the reason why I had a big gap over here initially when I first installed this window. There was a big gap at the bottom here and then it came up tight up here. So this all had to be dropped to compensate for the fact that when I pulled this out, it pulled some material away uh, uh, from and basically opened up this, this distance. I had to close it back down. It's done. It's quite a big project. Like I said, it was in two parts about a month and a half ago or so. I did the part where I straightened up the door pillar and I just kept digging, didn't put it on video. Um, but uh, I, today, when it came time to fitting up this chrome uh, stainless piece here that had to, has to wrap around and then feed into this, you know, obviously an issue uh, with this being a quarter inch taller that didn't feed into that properly. So I had to work that down until that worked out good and then refill it with a little bit of steel and uh, go on from there. On the inside of this this project here, I've got the, um, uh, if you'll recall, I put some weld nuts uh, into this one by one uh, piece of uh, one, 120 wall square tubing. And these are seat belt bolts that are holding this bracket, which I made out of seven or uh, three sixteenths, inch and a half by inch and a half. Then I recovered this steel plate where this had been bracketed to the Challenger and um, welded that plate onto, um, onto the, uh, this uh, angle iron here and then I gusseted it and that uh, created a situation where it had um, enough strength there uh, once I put this up that everything slides like it's intended to coming out of the reel. The reel is attached at uh, the base where it's supposed to uh, in its original location on the Challenger. So you can see this loops over and then it hooks to the floor here. So everything's in its proper operational uh, spot. So uh, that's where I'm going to leave it this week. And uh, I appreciate everybody watching. Thanks.